This is The Hollywood Outsider, and welcome to a special Inside the Movie edition of our show. Our normal show will air on Thursdays as usual via iTunes, Stitcher, or through our site, thehollywoodoutsider.com. But recently I conducted interviews both with the star and the director of Rays, Zoe Bell and Josh Waller, respectively. And this episode is going to contain those interviews, though they have been edited down to excise any pivotal plot points that we discussed. What is Rays, you ask? Well, I will tell you. Rays is an action film centered around 50 women that are captured by a secret society and forced to fight to the death or watch their loved ones perish. The motives, uh, you will have to watch the movie to really find out. I'm not going to tell you here. But Zoe Bell stars as Sabrina. She's a woman fighting to save her daughter's life. The movie also stars uh, Rachel Nichols, Doug Jones, Tracy Toms, and Rebecca Marshall. Rays is a no-holds-barred action flick, and the fights here are intense. And it's not exploitation, I I promise. This is just a gritty action flick. We reviewed Rays recently on episode 123, as well as you can look for my uh, written review shortly on the site, thehollywoodoutsider.com again. Raise hits theaters and video on demand January 10th, and you can find out more about the actual movie at RaiseTheMovie.com. First up is Zoe Bell. Now, most of our listeners, you guys already know who Zoe is. But for those that don't, she is one of the most accomplished stunt people in her field. Her work dates back to Xena, and has continued to gain traction in the States uh, in numerous films, but truly she stood out for her work in Kill Bill. She made the transition to acting when she appeared in Tarantino's Death Proof section of the Grindhouse film. And yes, she was the one doing that crazy stunt on top of the white car. In Ray's Bell continues her trajectory into acting with the lead as Sabrina. The movie demands a lot more from her than just physicality, and I personally thought that she was more than up to the task. As much as she seems like quite the ass kicker in real life, she is also one of the most pleasant interviews I've ever had the pleasure to do. Just a great down-to-earth personality, and I'm sure you guys are going to feel the same. Uh, Again, we had to edit the interview based on we don't want to give spoilers away, so... Here's my interview with Zoe Bell. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. You are all over my internet today. Am I? Uh oh. Yeah. Why is that? Um, <laughs> some interview, and you gave a quote, so of course they ran with it. Expen- yeah, I know. That quote <laughs> freaked me out because it's slightly out of context. So, yeah. It's, it's very out of context. I didn't read anything more than that, then you were just. You you were talking to him. You're reading for it, whatever the case is. Okay. So, but I was just a bit like, I mean, I, anyway, yes. Well, I'm excited about that movie, whether I'm a part of it or not. It's <laughs> sort of what happened, and I got chatty about it, you know. Well, I hope you are. I hope I wish you the best. That would be a great role for you. It would be. It would be a great role for any female, I think. Well, we're talking about you. They can get their own job. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to talk to you. I know I only have 15 minutes, so I, I know you got probably 40 more interviews to do. I've got to ask you, after watching Ray's, I mean, that is an angry, angry movie. Do you do you ever get stopped and, and people wonder if you're that person? Um, I don't know. I've, not, I've yet to have anyone think that I am Sabrina, but I but even before uh, Ray's, I think it's easy for people to assume that if you spend your career um, beating people up, for a living that maybe you're an, you're an aggressive type of person. But um, the irony that seems to be lost on people is that I fake it for a living. So, <laughs> And I'm, I'm more of a performance junkie than I am uh, an, aggressing, an aggressive junkie. But, I mean, I get a kick out of it. I think it's, I think it's cool that it's so aggressive and angry and oh, female-driven. And, but, no, I'm by no means that person. And I, I, I'm pretty comfortable being... A female, I don't have any sort of need to prove how tough we are, and ironically, because that's sort of the movie does definitely does a bit of that. Well, I got to ask you before we get to the specifics of the movie. I want to, and I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, but originally you came to the states mm. to pursue a career as a stunt person, and I want to know why yeah. why stunts. Um, well, I was already a stunt girl in New Zealand, so I'd been a stunt woman for years before I came to the states. And I came to the states actually on my way to Canada. And um, ended up through a whole bunch of strange happenings at the auditions for Kill Bill. And as far as the why a stunt woman, I don't know if this sounds weird, but at the time I couldn't imagine a cooler job. Like I did gymnastics and I did martial arts by choice. I mean, my parents paid, God bless them, but (laughs) I loved that stuff. And stunts just seemed like a combination of the two plus performance, which was just I just, I honestly, when I discovered that that existed as a career, I, I, I couldn't think of anything else I would rather do. 
do you think as a stunt person that stunt people are are properly acknowledged in the industry? That, that's one thing we kind of talk about on our show. Uh, it seems like they kind of get shortchanged. Yeah, it's a tough. It's a tough topic that one because no, technically we don't. You know, you're sort of you're sort of like the drummer of a band. You know, and mm-hmm. <laughs> the actors might be sort of like the lead singers and the you know lead guitar is maybe the director and. But it's sort of a, I don't know if that analogy even works, but you know what I mean? It's kind of a, um, the hard part is back in the day, your job was to n- not exist to the general public. Like the whole point was to not really know that it was being faked, so to speak, you know? So it's a love-hate relationship with not getting enough credit because, I don't know, I kind of feel like as a stunt girl, as long as my colleagues, and my work peers knew what my work was. I kind of liked being the behind the scenes person, which is maybe say something because I'm such a loud mouth and so not biased <laughs> behind the scenes by nature that maybe there was some relief in that for me. But, um, but at the same time, when I'm talking about my other stunt peers, I would love for them to be getting the credit and acknowledgement that they deserve, you know. It becomes an interesting topic around awards and stuff like that where it's sort of a... You know, if our depart the department in general deserves more acknowledgement, it's a it's a really interesting topic. Actually, I could talk about it for hours. I completely agree with that because, especially, you guys are you know you put a lot on the line. There's a lot of chance for injury. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, an injury, and you know, we all know someone who either out for life or is out of life. You know, I mean, it's not. There's a lot of times when you're like tripping over vacuum cleaners and it's, you know, it's not that big a deal. And then there's other days where you're, you know, literally putting your life on the line and it's, uh, you know, those days are big deals. With with Grindhouse, or some people call it Death Proof now, they forget it was one whole movie, but you, you, made, yeah. you made the transition to actress. Do you think, even though you still do stunt work, is that kind of where you have your sights set right now? Yeah, definitely. It it has become. It's sort of a. Um, I'm doing less and less stunt work. It's a. Um, it's it's sort of one of those things like. Uh, it's sad to say, sort of technically goodbye to my stunt career, but but I kind of just look at it as a natural trajectory that is. This is where my career has led me to, um, and the conscious decision to sort of remove myself from stunt doubling in particular has been almost more so for me psychologically because as much as jumping off buildings isn't most people's comfort zone being a stunt girl is my comfort zone that's what I'm used to that's my safe place ironically um (laughs) and being an actor has been far more sort of well it's new and it's you know it's it's just it's hard and it's scary and it's challenging and so I think I had to sort of commit a hundred percent to this new endeavor so as not to like skulk back to where I was comfortable, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And do you find it hard? I mean, especially since, I mean, you've been the Kill Bill, Grindhouse, a lot of these movies that are known and people look at you and say, "Ah, she could probably kick my ass. Do you, do you find it hard to be seen as anything more than just tough when you're auditioning for parts? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's definitely a, um, it's, that's an ongoing challenge. And it's one that, you know, I fully understand it and I can fully appreciate it. And it's by no means an insult. So it's, it's a challenge that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to spend the time stepping up to. Let's talk about, let's talk about Ray's because that's, that's why you're here. And I had heard about this let's movie. Let's talk about Ray's. Yeah. The movie, the movie itself is really, really good. And I'm, I'm not saying that just okay. because you're here. I really, it took me by surprise. I, I'd heard about it and then I watched it. This is a brutal movie. And the title is spot yeah, is. on. I mean, women are getting completely demolished. So what, What? <laughs> I mean, literally. Is it wrong that it makes me giggle a bit when you say that? No, because that means you had fun doing it. What about Ray's Caught Your Eye, or how did the film come to you? It's, so, it's not as direct of a story as, as, as journalists might want it to be, because it makes it a little harder to, to report. But basically, Kenny Gage, Andy Pagana, and Josh Waller Kenny and Andy had come up, well, Kenny had basically come up with this concept. Kenny and Andy had been talking about it. They met Josh and sort of Josh came into the fold and they were talking about females that they could use or cast. And it started off as a short. Josh dropped dropped my name as in, like, it'd be kind of cool to get someone like Zoe and Kenny 
was like, yeah, that'd be amazing. And Josh was like, oh, well, actually, since she's a friend of mine, I've known Josh for years. So it all started off in the very sort of early stages. I mean, the concept of race had been around for ages um, with those that with Kenny, but it just sort of grew. We started off as it being short. I was sort of meant to be a bit of a cameo. Um, Rachel Nichols was the leader of the short. They brought me on as a producer, which was really exciting to me. Mm-hmm. And then sort of in the middle of doing the short, it just sort of started to pick. I can't even remember what exactly was the catalyst, but it all started to sort of pick up a bit of pace. And people were starting to wonder about the feature, and we started wondering why we weren't making a feature, and so we thought maybe we would, and we had Robert turn it into a feature script, and we scrambled around and found money and amazing crew and managed to pull in some incredible cast and, you know, got this movie made. I don't know, I always feel a little bit like had we have gone exactly through the normal channels, maybe a little movie like this would never have got made. Maybe it took a little bit of just doing one step at a time instead of a whole bunch of planning. Yeah, it it took a lot of hard work from a lot of amazing people. It's a very it's a very grateful little movie that could, you know. Oh yeah. And you know what my favorite part of the entire movie is? You hear that it's Mm -hmm. fifty women in a cage, cage match, fight to the death. I think some people would automatically get the impression, oh, really? You know, because men are men are predictable in that respect. <laughs> when when you watch the movie, I was impressed how brutal the fights are. There there is no holds barred. It's it's completely intense. How hard was it for you to film it? Did anybody get hurt? Um, no, no one. I always wished we'd done that. Actually, at, at the end of the credits, I kind of wished we'd put we now to put in the no women were hurt in the filming of this movie, but we <laughs> didn't, we didn't get it done in time, which always bums me out. Um, some of, we got a bunch of bruises and scrapes like you're going through, but no, it was all, it was all pretty good, really. I mean, the girls all put in so much time pre-shoot into working over the choreography and they all did their individual training and everyone was just really into it. And I think, yeah, I don't know. It was, it, it went really well, you know, having fights be brutal and realistic and I say this intentionally, even though it was women fighting, mm-hmm. was really, really important to all of us as filmmakers. Um, you know, and and I, I had a particular personal passion for it because it was the kind of action that, and I've done loads of different female fight styles and mm-hmm. genres, and, and it was just, this was something that I'd not really done before, and I was really excited at the concept of having it be um, that kind of brutal. And it, I mean, that's, that's just exhausting, you know, emoting and fighting like that. <laughs> we were all, all the girls were just shattered by the end of the film. Oh, I bet. And speaking of emoting, you're, Sabrina's a mother in the film, and she's basically fighting for her daughter's life. And you are the movie. Mm. I mean, the movie is really, I mean, there's other characters in it, but it's really about you. And because of your <laughs> isolation, your character kind of has to convey a, a lot more through, through her actions or facial expressions, a lot more than, than just words. So was that a challenge for you? Yeah. Because you're a very physical person. Yeah, I am a very physical person. Um, yeah, listen, Sabrina and her story were definitely a challenge for me. I mean, by the time we started shooting, it was a challenge I was ready for. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was aware that it was gonna that it was a massive challenge for me, and, and so I just was dedicated to putting in loads of hours. I mean, I worked with a, um, an acting coach friend of mine for like one on one hours I mean my little checkbook was like that was part of the investment in the movie I think <laughs> <laughs> um, so by the time I got there I just knew who Sabrina was so so sort of I intensely that and thank God because you know when you're jumping around a script and and you're sort of jumping around um, the character's storyline like that it was um, it was necessary and I, I said to Josh before we started shooting I was like look I don't know if it's unprofessional of me to say this or not, but this is the work I've done. And just so you know, this is sort of how I've sort of plotted her, her arc and her journey. And, and I would love for you to know that I'm going to rely on you heavily to remind me of these things because I might get lost in it, you know. So he was really good about that. It was a very sort of hands-on. And, you know, the other thing that was amazing for me was being surrounded by the cast that, that I was, I mean, 
the skill and the experience of like Tracy and Rachel, you know, the first fight I did with Rachel was, I feel like that's where I really found Sabrina and I found what it was to be in this underground hell. And then having Tracy Toms there and I mean, you know, and having Doug Jones who I've worked with before and just these women, Rebecca Marshall bringing the evil and Cody bringing the innocent and it was just, it was a really, not easy, but it was a really super supportive place to be for me, being Sabrina. <laughs> uh, last question. Okay. Make it a good one. All right. Well, this is one I haven't seen a lot of people ask. So we've seen you in a lot of tough roles. I mean, obviously. Mm. I want to know, when when are we going to see you in a comedy or a drama? Yeah, I want to know the same thing. I'm, I love the idea of comedy at the moment. I mean, I'm down for a bit of drama too, but I tell you what, at the end of Rays, it, we all just kept joking that my next role should be a romantic comedy just so that I don't sink into the depths of despair that Sabrina was in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sort of explore the roles of comedy a little bit. A couple of ideas that I'm sort of developing that are a little bit more around the making people laugh sort of thing rather than making people cry and want to throw up. <laughs> you should. You're very charismatic. Well, uh, thank you. No, I'm not just not just saying it because you're here either. The movie was great. Uh, I know you got to go, so I just want to say thanks for coming and, and talking to us. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe we'll see a, another race type film or a romantic comedy. I look forward to that. Yeah, maybe both. Not the same film, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Zoe. Have a good, have a fun junket. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care. Thanks again, Zoe. I have to admit, I don't get starstruck or in awe of people very often. I, it really doesn't phase me anymore, but I got a little starry-eyed talking with her. It's probably the accent. Moving on, I also had the chance to interview the director of Ray's, Josh Waller. Now, Josh has been carving his career in Hollywood for some time. During the interview, we discussed where Ray's came from, what it really is, and what's next for the director. The interview, once again, has been edited because we did talk extensively about spoilers to the film. None of those will come up in the interview, I promise, so you're safe to listen. Here's my interview with Josh Waller. All right. Well, I, I have to tell you, to be honest with you, I've, I watch a lot of movies every year, so it's pretty rare that one catches me by surprise, and, and Ray's did, so well done. Oh, thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate that. And that, That's sincere. It's, it's not one I knew about it, but it's kind of fallen off the radar, and, and it popped up, and I watched it, and... It was a lot better than I honestly anticipated. Great job. Cool. Uh, well, I think that I think that's one of the pluses about doing a, a film like Rays within that like subgenre of like women in prison is that because you know people are just going to automatically anticipate that it's going to be exploitation and you mm-hmm. know kind of well exploitation. <laughs> well, and honestly, I, I had read a few reviews before I watched it just to kind of get a feel for it, I and mean, some of them had implied that it was a there was an exploitation genre. I didn't feel like that at all watching the movie. Not at all. Good. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, look, there, I mean, there's obviously, uh, you know, I'd be a fool to completely avoid some of the cliches within that genre. But, you know, I just chose to take some of those cliches more seriously than, than I've seen before. Before we get straight to the movie, tell us a little bit about yourself. What brought you to Hollywood made you want to be a writer and director? <laughs> Okay. Well, you know, I, I've been I've been in LA since uh, early 2000. I moved here from New York City, um, and uh, when I was living in uh, New York, I was uh, attending the William Esper Studio. So I went to a two-year acting program. Okay. Out there, you know, I I wanted to be involved with film ever since you know I was probably like five years old. And initially inspired by, you know, films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind and and such. I just didn't know how I was going to go about doing it. And I also, I also always thought that because, you know, the, the, the persons that you relate to in a film are the characters, are the actors that I always, you know, imagined that I was going to become an actor, you know, mm-hmm. and and started to kind of like, throw some of my energy into that as an adult after I finished with the, the military. But then, you know, I, the, the only thing that I never really liked about acting was the lack of control that you have on your, you know, with your own career. 
you know, so I, I started, you know, writing and developing stuff for myself, like as an actor and then produced and directed a little short and for me to act in, it was going to be, you know, like a showpiece for me as an actor. And pretty much the, the moment that I finished shooting it, I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to be in front of the camera, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the, the, the sense the sense of accomplishment, the sense of fulfillment that came with creating something from absolutely nothing, you know, creating something that was nothing more than an idea. And then I was able to translate that idea into something tangible and then watch it on a screen. That was an immense sense of accomplishment. And I just went like, wow, I, there, that is something that I have never felt in any way as an actor. Wow. And so I just kind of went for it. And, and you know, I, and I also never like busted my ass as an actor. It was kind of one of those, I was one of like, so many people out in this industry that like they, you know, they move out here and they're like, I'm going to be an actor. But then they don't like realize that like, if you want to be an actor, you have to take it seriously, just as seriously as anything else. Mm -hmm. And it is a business and you have to bust your ass. And, and that was something that I was just kind of like, I'm an actor, but I, but they never really busted my ass to do it. And the second that I realized that I was supposed to be behind the camera, I don't know. It's just like I had a fire lit under my ass and you could not put it out. I was just like, I, I was just hungry, hungry, hungry. And uh, that's, I think that's when you know when you've, you've hit upon the thing you're supposed to be doing. So what about, and to quote you, what about uh, Ray's lit a fire under your ass? Um, the challenge, you know, like I said, I, I didn't grow up watching exploitation films. I was never particularly interested in them as a, as a, as a kid and I was, I wasn't really interested in them as an adult. So when my friend Kenny Gage, who's my, you know, one of my producing partners on mm -hmm. the film and, and, uh, he and I came up with, you know, developed the, the story for it. He had the original idea and asked me if I just take a look at like this little seven page short that he had written. And I took it home and I just thought that there was something there. It was a little bit more exploitative than, I'm interested in. So what, when I got back to him and said, look, man, I think there's something here. There's something interesting. But if I was going to be involved with something like this, here's what I would want to do. And then he and I just kind of started like, you know, tossing, you know, ideas back and forth. And, um, and, and what interested me in the project was that it's not necessarily something I would gravitate towards as a, as a viewer, mm -hmm. as an audience member, and it's not necessarily something I would gravitate towards as a filmmaker. So for those reasons alone, I was like, let me challenge myself by doing something that I, I don't think I would normally have thought that I would do. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way you should And it do was it. like, so if I am going to do it, like I'm going to do it with, in my way. And what brought you and to I'm going to try to take it more seriously. What brought you to Zoe Bell as, as your perfect lead for Sabrina? Zoe's been a close friend of mine for about seven or eight years. And I, you know, uh, like a close friend, I, I knew what she was obviously capable of as a stunt woman. But more than that, as a friend, I knew that I knew what she was capable of as an actor. And I felt that, you know, she was just the perfect person for a film like this. She bring, you know, she would be able to bring like a, a definitely a sense of uh, she'd be able to bring like some real gravitas to all those action sequences. Mm -hmm. And because we are friends and there's a level of trust there, I thought that if if anyone was going to be able to push her to, you know, deeper, richer um, uh, emotional heights, it would be someone who she also trusts. Well, one of the best compliments, and I, and I kind of told you this earlier but for a movie like Ray's it's a movie about women cage fighting really against their will and even though you can kind of see the genre roots it never really felt to me like exploitation so you know it's not caged heat or something like that and right exactly was that intentional I mean you kind of talked about it a little bit but was it intentional to make sure that that stayed out of it as much as possible or were you it wasn't really intentional it just worked out that way because of your directing style it's intention it, it was intentional you know, I wanted to take it very seriously. I wanted to kind of like a, an approach that I took to the film was if this was all 
about 50 dudes that were abducted and forced to kill each other in, you know, fights, no one would ever call it an exploitation film, <laughs> no matter what you did with it. That's you know true. what I mean? That's true. Yep. It would just be, it would just be a bunch of dudes that were abducted and they were fighting. It'd be like Fight Club, except like, it'd be like Fight Club meets Hostel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was like, why why does it automatically make it exploitation if it's women? You know, what, like what like what what's the difference? The difference is is if you do it with women, most people I think, and what's been done in the past in this kind of you know women in prison subgenre, it's like. Oh, look, it's going to be women, so that means there needs to be nudity. That mean, means there needs to be sexual innuendo between the guards. That means there needs to be sexual innuendo or even sex scenes between the women, like some kind of like shower scene. It's like, oh, well, if they're underground for, you know, if women are underground alone without guys for an extended period of time, you know they're going to become lesbians. It's like, that's <laughs> bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that is so the expectation, like, yeah. It's like I just wanted to treat it exactly the same as if it were men. That's why there's no nudity. So that's why the girls are not wearing revealing clothes. They're wearing, like, gray sweats, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's why, like, anything that, like, that felt, like, you know, sexual in, like, the dialogue or anything, like, we cut it out of the script. I just didn't even shoot it. And that really helped kind of rein that all in. We kind of took care of that early on, so it wasn't something that I had to be concerned about well, as we were shooting. That's good. But it also relates to a, a guideline that we have within my own company. You know, my company didn't produce Rays. I did it outside of my company, but my mm-hmm. company, SpectreVision, we try to... One of the litmus tests that we use on our films, which are all genre films, uh, is we don't want the films to just rely on the genre itself. So anytime we have a project, we kind of look at it and go, okay, if we take the genre element out of this script, do we still have a compelling story with like interesting characters? If the answer is yes, then we're on the right path. If the answer is you take out the genre element and then it's just a pile of shit with a bunch of dialogue, then that means that you need to go back in and you need to start doing some character work and develop the plot more and then throw in the horror elements, you know? And let me ask you about that. When you're talking about the actresses, you've got Zoe Bell and Rachel Nichols. They're kind of known for their physicality through different, different Mm -hmm. things, but you've also got actresses like Rebecca Marshall and Tracy Toms, actresses that aren't really known as fighters. Did did you mm-hmm. cast them intentionally to make the characters a little bit more sympathetic to the audience so that you could sell those points you're talking about? No, I, I mean, well, sympathetic. I mean, you're talking, if well, you're talking you know. about Rebecca Marshall. I mean, her character, Phoebe, is a complete piece of shit. So, you know, like, I don't think anybody sympathizes with her character. But... <laughs> Re- rela- relatable. Let's see in that these women, if you see them all as fighters, you kind of, you know, you think, well, these all of these women could really fight. But some of these are really just actresses that aren't normally known for this kind of physicality. I, well, I didn't really want to, we didn't want to pick anyone that, that was fighters. I didn't want that. Like we didn't want to make this, it shouldn't be mortal combat right. or best of the best, <laughs> like the female edition of best of the best or something like that. You know, I wanted it to be about like normal women in society that are plucked. And what would a normal woman do? if she was put into these circumstances. So I didn't, I, I didn't have like those kind of thoughts about like, Oh, well, in, in, during the casting process of like, Oh, well, Rebecca or Tracy, they're not really known for this. I honestly, the casting process was incredibly simple. The first two people that we thought of were, you know, was like, well, Zoe's a friend. We can call Zoe. And then I was like, well, Rachel's one of my best friends. So I'll just call Rachel. And I think the two of them would be great together. And they were. Uh, Rebecca Marshall has been a friend for 10 years. She was in like one of my shorts that was pretty successful back in 2006. And we've worked together a couple of times on little fun stuff. And I cast Rebecca as Phoebe and, and because it's so opposite of who Rebecca is as a person. And it's so opposite of any character that she's played I wanted to give her a chance to do something different and push her to do, push her to new heights, 
with Tracy, it was kind of a similar thing. It was like, you know, Zoe obviously knows Tracy well from like Death Proof and all through these years. And, and I knew Tracy and I mean, look, it's, it's Tracy Tom. She's, <laughs> you know, she's an incredibly gifted actor. Mm-hmm, so is. it was like, let's get her. I just based it off of like personalities and talent, nothing more. Uh, Rebecca- if you have a good actor, like, it, like, I don't care what work they've done in the past. If it's a talented actor, they can pull it off, you know? Oh, Rebecca was evil. I mean, she just, she nailed that. She she was evil. And- <laughs> yeah, she did. I'm glad that you felt that she nailed it. Cause, uh, oh, we she, felt so she well. nailed it. She never went over the line. She was right, right where she needed to be. Well, the fights in the film... For me personally, I thought were vicious, just brutal and vicious and extremely well shot because normally, and I explained this uh, on our show when I was reviewing it, a lot of these action films, you go see them, you know, Jason Statham, whoever it is, and you know exactly what's coming. You know who's going to win. You know how the fight's going to go. You know where the hits are going to be. I mean, it's the same fight you've seen a hundred times. I watched this and I was, there are several of these fights where I was on the edge of my seat going, oh, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know, even know who's going to win, even when I know who the lead of the movie is, you know? And, and you set that up very early and I won't go into that, but you do, the fights are extremely well done. How hard was it to choreograph that? Um, Well, they weren't hard to choreograph. You know, it was, it was a bit of like a, a collaboration with our, um, stunt coordinator which this was like his first feature that he was a stunt coordinator on a guy named james young and um you know after he's a member of a stunt crew called thousand pound crew and immediately after we wrapped he you know went out to do captain america like winter soldier um and he was the double for sebastian stan so it was a bit of a collaboration with james and myself and obviously zoe you know like not having her input or not asking for it would be completely foolish. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, she was a producer on the project with us. So, you know, it's when you have a resource like Zoe, you know, you use it. <laughs> and, um, and with Kenny, you know, um, Kenny Gage was, uh, you know, in addition to being a producer and like us developing the story together, Kenny was a professional, an undefeated professional boxer before he got into the industry. So like we all had, you know, our fingers, you know, dipping into the, into the choreography. The difficulty wasn't like the difficulty really came when we started having to shoot the fights, Mm -hmm. not because I didn't know how I wanted to shoot them, but because this is a low budget independent film. And what we were trying to accomplish, which was 19 action sequences in 30 days, that's not normal, nor is it healthy or recommended. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and right, and and I say that now, like I would not recommend that to anyone, including myself, um, because it was damn hard and exhausting. You know, we do spend like half of a day on one fight, and then you'd be like, okay, after lunch we're going to go into this fight, and these were fights that you would normally have like two or three days to be shooting. You know, it was just about like trying to find unique ways to cover those fights because we were going to be living in the exact same arena for all of them. And if we shot them in like a similar style and if the choreography didn't change in every fight to reflect each of the characters and not necessarily their like fighting style, but to reflect their emotional life and their arc then, you know, it would just get fucking boring. You just see like, you know, oh, here they go down and then I fucking well, and they're just going to start punching each other again. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it, just, <laughs> it, would get, it would get boring. So, well, especially, and they were all really good, but the very, I mean, the end of the movie when you've got, when you've got the fight between, was it Phoebe and Sabrina, where it's just like lions in a cage. Ooh. God, I love that fight. I, I jumped out of my seat. So kudos. The, Thank um, you. Yeah, I mean, it's always good when you watch a, a movie with fighting and you actually want to be in the fight. You know? Oh, wait till you see the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you already got some ideas for it? Uh, I wrote out treatments for Rays 2 through 5. Oh, wow. Nice. So I, ideally, like, Rays was a franchise. Okay, you know? I could see how that it's, would it's work. It's got a really interesting society. And, like, you know, and also one of my other, you know, objectives with, with this franchise is, you know, people are always complaining and you read all these articles about, like, you know, there not being enough roles for women in the film today. You know, it's just like actually getting worse. 
And I was like, well, we've managed to create a franchisable film, in my opinion, where the cast is, you know, 98% female. And not only is it 98% female, it's roles for women where they get to do shit where they don't normally get asked to do it. It's like, Mm -hmm. this would typically be like a a boy movie, you know? Absolutely. So we're asking girls and it's like, no, forget all that candy and the makeup and the pretty shit. Like, we're going to come and... Do you guys want to come get dirty, roll around in the dirt and beat the shit out of each other, have some fight sequences? And and pretty much everybody was just like, hell yeah. <laughs> and because the whole concept is that like everyone basically dies except for one person, that what that means is that with every film that we do, I can cast a whole new gang of actresses, you know, mm-hmm. and hopefully like help cultivate some, you know, young careers. Well, I got to tell you, it's going to help sell the movie having like genre favorites like Zoe and Rachel and Doug Jones, Sherilyn Fenn, all those guys. That's definitely going to help sell the movie to yeah. the people that will be vocal about it. My, my last... I think so. I think this film is going to really find its – I think it's really going to find its audience over time on like the VOD market, you know. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's just, it's just that kind of film. So Raise is coming out January 10th. What's next for you after this? Uh, well, you know, right uh, ever since we wrapped um, Mechanic, which is the film that I did right after Raise that I've been prepping for like nine years, I've just been focused on um, our production company, SpectreVision, and just some of the films that we've been producing, like Cooties, which is coming out at premiering at Sundance, and also Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which is also premiering at Sundance. Oh, that's a lot. And then uh, I'm getting ready to head down to Columbia here in two days, and we are doing another film called Henley and then following that up with a film called Curse to Darkness that we're producing that Jorge Michelle Grau is directing. And as soon as we finish that, I will head back to the States and I will be directing and producing a comedy called I'm from the Future, <laughs> which is just a straight up heartfelt comedy. That's, that's a complete, complete turn of events for you from, from this point. Well, it, anyway. it, it, yeah, I mean, as far as like my directing, I just, I mean, yes, our the, our production company, our film company is, you know, genre based, but my love for film is exactly that. It's for all film. That's so good. like, I'm interested in, you know, doing a horror film and, and then following the horror film with like a comedy and then following the comedy with a drama and then following that with an action. But I do have a, as a director, I do have a huge soft spot for action adventures so <laughs> uh i'm sorry for taking so much of your time and i, I hope don't but, worry about it I, I enjoyed it i will uh wish you the best of luck i hope the movie is a great success it, it's very good we'll tout it as much as we can and we'll look forward to raise Thanks, raise two was it raises whatever you want to <laughs> yeah however you would pluralize that raising the bar oh, oh no, i see what you did it. there i see what you for, did there. please forget that i said that <laughs> we'll do it <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. That'll do it for this special Inside the Movie edition of Rays for The Hollywood Outsider. Make sure you check out Zoe and Josh's film Rays when it hits theaters and video on demand on January 10th. And find out more about the movie itself at RaiseTheMovie.com. That's R-A-Z-E, TheMovie.com. Again, we'll have our normal episode on Thursday, available at iTunes, Stitcher, or TheHollywoodOutsider.com. And you can email us any thoughts you have on this episode or on the show itself at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. That's feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Thanks for listening, and remember, the next time you guys go to a theater, buy yourself some popcorn. <laughs>